What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here and it's the holiday season and uh, you know, I've never done one of these videos before and this kind of got me thinking. I, I'm gonna give you guys some ideas of what I think might be good gifts for the PC slash tech head in your family. I think most of us know trying to find or buy gifts for somebody that's very tech minded is very difficult because there's a lot of subjectiveness, there's a lot of, of taste. And so I put together a list of stuff that uh, I actually use quite a bit myself that I think might make a useful gift for somebody out there. And we're hopefully doing this video soon enough in the month to where it gives you guys time to find this stuff and get it uh, in time for Christmas. So with that, let's get started. Most people do these gift guides like gifts under 50 bucks, gifts under 100 bucks or whatever. That's not really the way I'm doing this. Um, this, this one's just more so about useful gifts that are neat, they, they kind of check that box of going, I like doodads and beep, bleep bloops and buttons and stuff. And uh, it's not just, see, there's cool gifts that you can give like, like a moon lamp. It looks like the moon and it's a lamp. But other than that, it's just not necessary, right? These all are gonna have function to them as well as have form and everything uh, to make them look good. So the first one, and by the way, none of these are sponsored. Absolutely none of these are like, hey, throw us in your guide and we'll give you money or anything like that. None of that's the case. This is all stuff that I use personally and I thought would make a, a, good, a good guide for you guys. We're gonna start it off here with the Stream Deck. Now, right off the bat, <clears throat> the name itself, I think makes people think that's not for me. I don't want to live stream. But the thing about the Stream Deck is it's completely customizable. And what makes it extremely customizable is the fact that it also supports IFTTT or IFTTT. Now in my, in my home office slash studio game room, whatever you want to call it, I have two of these set up. I have one specifically set up for my streams and then I have a smaller one set up for uh, my IFTT and smart controls in my room. Now in my room, I've got, geez, and I really need to simplify this. I've got Philips Hue, I've got Govee, I've got um, uh, Nano Leaf, and then I've obviously got the, the lights that are on the desk and all that. And I've got routines set up through, uh, through Amazon to allow me to be able to control those with my voice. But I wanted to be able to more quickly and easily start switching my light configuration in my room based on my mood. Sometimes I've got it set to vaporwave. Sometimes I want it warm where I bring all the tones to whites and I bring them all nice and dim and it's enough ambient light to where I'm not just looking at a screen without any other light, but it gives me a nice, warm, comfortable feel. I've got different routines set up for watching TV in there, watching movies, or when I'm actually live streaming, where I have certain lights set to certain colors to, to give me additional front key lighting. But the fact that you can control anything in your home using a Stream Deck and setting up IFTT, and, uh, IFTTT integration makes it the perfect device for anyone that is into automation. And the cool thing about that is you don't need to have a smart assistant to make this work. Because a lot of people are like the idea of automation and such, but they don't like the idea of the microphones and the always listening, uh, you know, are they spying on me kind of a thing where you can set up this sort of, you know, setup with the Stream Deck without having to deal with any of those microphones or voice activated stuff. Now, the cool thing about the Stream Deck is it does come in three different sizes. You got a mini, you've got the standard Stream Deck, and then you got the XL. And the only difference between them is how many buttons are on there. The cool thing is you can have different profiles that are gonna allow you to set up different folders, different subfolders. So even if you only get the mini, which is only six buttons, you can have them be folders per button, depending on what you want them to do, and they can open up to, to broader things. You just keep going down the menu tree or the window tree if you want, or you can go with the XL and just have all kinds of buttons to control all sorts of things. But basically, if you have a device that is smart, whether it be a lights or a pool pump or grounds lightings or anything like that, grounds lighting, or Christmas lights, whatever, you can control all of them through a Stream Deck. That's the cool thing about it. We should probably do a video about that someday. So that's why you can see number one on this list was, if you like customizing stuff, the Stream Deck is definitely gonna be a good place to start. Now we're gonna talk about uh, PC specific. I don't normally recommend PC parts to try and buy for somebody because I usually tell people, this is like me trying to buy my wife's shoes, right? Or, or a handbag. You just, you just don't try and buy without guidance. Shoes, handbag, jewelry, any of that stuff. You just give your significant other some money and you say, go buy it. PC parts are pretty much the same way. How would you know what part to buy somebody? Not to mention the pricing is so volatile right now and availability is, is slim. One thing I will caveat that with, caveat, cave, cave, caviar that with, is the fact that storage is something PC enthusiasts can always use more of. And fortunately right now, at the time of making this video, 
we have got a Crucial P2 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD for $44 on Amazon. Uh, that's one of those things where it's like, you know what? Who couldn't use an extra 500 gigabytes? Now, if you want to, if you want to scale that up to a one terabyte, you can get it for 83 bucks, two terabytes, 159. Let me put that in perspective. Two terabyte SSD for $159. When NVMEs first came out, a two terabyte NVMe SSD was like $1,200. So you can see it's like one ninth the price, if that's even a proper fraction, but whatever. It's like one ninth the price. And uh, who couldn't use an extra M.2? And you know what? If, if it's one of those things too, where if the person doesn't have any M.2 slots available in their system, you could get them an external M.2 uh, slot drive like we did, or you can even get an external enclosure and they can just connect it through USB-C and then they can have their game library uh, available with them when they move. But in terms of pricing, you'll find prices kind of all over the place with M.2s, but I thought that this was a current price right now definitely worth talking about uh, for anyone looking to buy a PC component for someone without fear of it being something that's completely unusable or unnecessary. Now I mentioned earlier my game room at home. In September, I bought myself some new lights because when I started live streaming again, I had to make the background more interesting. And I took a chance with a brand I had actually never heard of on Amazon. Turns out they're quite popular now and they have all sorts of different lighting and smart functionality. And that's a company called Govi. Uh, I purchased two of the Govi Lyra floor lamps. You guys have probably seen the light, actually you guys have seen the lights in my live streams if you've watched any of my live streams on Twitch. Um, you see that what looks like a, like a pole light sticking up in the background? That's, uh, that's actually one of the Govi Lyras. I have one in the front corner that you can't see that's behind the camera that's also shining some light at me to help give me lighting during my live streams. It also shines light at the racing simulator because I felt like that corner of the room was really dark. But they are smart app controlled. They do work with uh, smart uh, assistants, so Amazon, um, you know, Alexa. But once again, if you don't want to integrate them with any of the smart stuff, you just use the app on your phone or set up IFTTT on your stream deck. But they're bright and they're not the cheapest lights out there. But I'm gonna tell you right now, in terms of their integration, their ease of setup, they actually work. They don't drop connection to the app or the app suddenly can't find them. Um, like the LifeX lights were some of the worst lights I've ever used in terms of the software. The software was constantly forgetting. It was constantly dropping off the network. But so far the Govi lights have been awesome. I also have the Gobi, the Govi uh, wall lights, which are ones that you can make like designs with. I haven't put those up yet. But they also have your screw in uh, Edison style bulbs, which will be replacing my hue. Um, they also have um, edge lighting, so you could put them up in coves or you can put them on the edge of your desk or whatever. You've got floodlights for outside. You've got uh, ambient immersion lighting that could go on your TV. So it goes through an HDMI. It then creates lighting around the TV that matches the HDMI scene. Um, you've got RGB string lights. So you can see why this company has quickly become a huge favorite of mine when it comes to lighting. Now, Govi also has something really intelligent, and I'm gonna be putting these in my house as well, and I know this sounds like an ad, I swear to God, I've bought all my Govi stuff, I've never even talked to them. They have the Govi Wi-Fi smart water sensors. Anyone that has ever dealt with water damage in a house will tell you, getting to knowing there's a leak quickly is the fastest way to prevent serious damage. I've had a water leak in my new house. We had a new pipe bust. Fortunately, it was only flooding my garage, which is all epoxy floor, and it's also got a, um, you know, it's recessed, so there was concrete all around it. It just was like a big bowl at that point. That, that was going for like two days before we figured it out because we were actually on vacation over the weekend. Came home, found water running down the driveway to find that the main coming into the home had broken right before the shutoff valve, so even if we'd turn off the valve, nothing would've happened. But if I'd had this sensor set up, what you put them anywhere there's water in your home, behind toilets, behind uh, water heaters, behind the main valve by your house. Our, my house also has a uh, fire suppression sprinkler system in it, so you could put it by the main valve where that is. Anywhere water flows, you can put these sensors and they will connect to your Wi-Fi and if they detect water or excess moisture, not like, you know, your, your kid took a shower with it really hot and so now there's water running down the, the mirror because of condensation. No, it's gotta be like actual serious moisture detection. You'll get a notification on your phone, hey, water leak detected, you can get to it quickly and easily and fix it. So that's something I'm gonna be adding as well to my home. Uh, a little bit less fun, but definitely tech oriented where you are gonna be able to give yourself some, some head, you know, some lead time on trying to prevent water damage. The last smart home thing I'm gonna mention here is the Casa Smart Plug. This is just a, it's basically a dumb switch, essentially. It's a, it's a smart dumb switch. It's an on, it's an off, that's it. 
doesn't do anything other than through app or voice command if it's connected to either Google Home or uh, Alexa or whatever. Through your app or through IFTTT, you can set it to turn lights on and off. So this is really good for things like um, if you have custom, like right now it's holiday seasons. You know, people have those inflatables on their on their front yards right now with inflatable snowmen and Christmas trees and all that sort of stuff. You can have those hooked up to a regular timer or you can have them be smart controlled where you could use these sorts of plugs to have them turn on and off on a certain schedule or manually turn them on and off with your app or a button on the switch. We have this hooked up to our Christmas tree right now so that it turns on at a certain hour and turns off at a certain hour so not burning energy unnecessarily. You can use them, they have outdoor versions so you can use them for stream lights outside, um, have them be smart controlled. But if there's anything you wanna have turn on and off with a schedule and you don't have a smart device that is plugged into, you can turn it smart on a schedule with or just on off by using these smart switches. It also helps too if you're going on vacation and be leaving the house for a bit. You can have these hooked up to various lamps throughout the house and have lights turn on and off so it doesn't look obvious when you're not home. A lot of useful stuff for this. It's inexpensive. You can buy them in multi-packs and um, I love setting that sort of stuff up. When we first moved into our home, which is a smart home, I had a lot of fun setting up all the smart features. This one's gonna be a little bit of a shameless plug, but the Jay's Two Cents gaming mat. So we came out with a gaming mat after everyone else pretty much did. That's okay, we saved the best for last. We got the Jace 2 Cents gaming mat, which is uh, 35 and a half inches by 17 and a quarter, uh, in three quarters inches, which gives you plenty of room for your keyboard and your mouse. It's ultra slick material, so there's not gonna be any wear and tear to the rubber on the bottom of your keyboard. The mouse is gonna move around super slick. It's got uh, stitched edging, so none of it's gonna come unwrapped or curl up on you, it's not gonna curl. Um, friction material on the bottom, so it's not gonna slide around your desk. And I think anyone that cares about their gaming experience, would absolutely have to have a Jay's Two Cents gaming mat. All right, and last but not least, uh, let's talk about um, cables here. Setups, I'm getting ready to redo mine because there's some things I don't like about it that I wanna fix. Um, cable management is one of those things that becomes kind of a complete nightmare. But oftentimes what makes the cable management difficult is the fact that you have multiple plugs for everything. So for instance, if you have a keyboard that's wired or, or even not wired, let's say you have a wireless keyboard that needs a charger. I have a wireless keyboard, the G915. I did a video about that when I got it. Did a video about it 18 months later, how it's held up. I've got the uh, Logitech Pro gaming mouse, which is wireless. I've got headphones. Um, I've, got my, I've got a few different devices that need power every now and then plugged on my desk. The problem with that is the fact that you've got a cable running to each one of those. And when it's time for me to plug in my keyboard or my mouse to charge, I'm looking for a cable, I'm then dropping it down behind my desk and plugging it into my hub and then plugging it in and then doing it twice for two cables. Magnetic detachable cables can definitely make life easier in this aspect because you get different ends. So with each kit, and I have a, a four pack here that I'm showing you guys for only 18 bucks. That's got four magnetic cables, three ends that come with each one. So you got a USB-C, You've got a micro USB and you've got an Apple and they call it an Apple iProduct I device because it's not like licensed by Apple. They can't call it an iPhone charger or whatever. Um, but it is gonna be a lightning cable that will plug into that. But the cool thing is you stick the end in the device and there's a magnetic side to it and then you have a magnetic cable. And when it touches, it's held together by magnets and then it completes the circuit. So the cool thing is you can get yourself one of those clips that goes on the back side of your desk. So then when you're not using them, you can just like have them sort of retract right back behind the desk and then you know you don't have to sit there and plug it in and unplug it. I don't know about you, but I'm constantly like fiddling with the plug to try and get it in just right, especially when it's like recessed like it is on the mouse where you gotta kind of get way down in there. Just having the nice uh, detachable magnet will make it nice and easy. It also makes sense for anything where you're worried about it getting kicked or damaged. We have these magnetic plugs on my uh, Oculus Quest because of the fact that my kids are very rough and they've already broken one cord and actually had the charger end broke off inside the, re the charger receptacle or the plug. I had to fish that out with like pliers to get it out. <laughs> Lucky they didn't break the charger port, but they definitely broke the cable. So by having these magnet cables now means that if they step on the cable or something, it's just gonna break away. Kind of like the MagSafe charger you used to have for the, uh, uh, the iProduct laptop, but it's like adding a MagSafe to everything. And getting four of them for 18 bucks seems like a pretty good deal. I'll be buying a couple of those for myself, or at least applying, giving them to my wife for a list of stuff to, to consider. But that's it. Those are the, the six items right now that I kind of did on this one that I thought would make really good gift ideas um, for the person in your life that's hard to shop for um, that likes tech. This is where I need you guys to not only help myself, 
but the entire community. Sound off in the comments below what your absolute best tech gift idea is, regardless of price, but put price down. I mean, obviously people who like tech be like, I would like a Porsche. Okay, that's not really helpful, right? So put down in the comments below or twi uh, tweet me at Jace Two Cents what your best gift giving idea is for, for the techie in your life. And then I will retweet and heart the favorite ones to try and get people ideas for this holiday season with still enough time to buy. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.